Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I have six cards today. It's a crazy long video, and I'll be showing you the Love from Lizzie July kit that I was invited by a friend of mine who's on their design team to participate in, just to let you know that Love from Lizzie exists. So let's get started with some cards. I haven't had a kit in my hands in years, so I thought I'd show you what comes in this one. It's got some six by six pattern paper this month, some printed ephemera, and these are a bunch of different images that you can use that go along with the pattern papers in the summer theme. We've got some stickers. These are epoxy stickers with sentiments. There's an Aloha die that has the outline and the word itself. There's a little package of beautiful sequins, which I totally forgot to use because there's so much in here. I didn't use all of it. And then there's a set of stamps that has three images on it and dies to go with it. Three rolls of washi tape. Just look at that fun gold shiny stuff. Kind of interesting to play with washi tape. I don't normally use washi tape on my cards. It's got some cardstock, including two sheets that I'll be using for my Copic coloring, because they're supposed to be Copic friendly. It's got one sheet that's on vellum, those limes, and then the acetate one is silver on one side and gold on the other, which is kind of a cool thing. Lizzie is known for these peel off stickers that you can use for borders and stuff. She's got them in all kinds of colors, but this month it's kind of purple-ish, which is a pretty color. Then we've got some epoxy dots in a bunch of different colors that coordinate with the papers. And then we have these tassels. I don't really know what I'm gonna do with them, but there you go. And then there's a whole sheet of pop dots that come with all of this in the Summer Fruits kit. Now, if you wanna see more details on the kit and flip through every single piece of paper, go see Christy Marcotte. I'm gonna put her video linked in the description below because she does a good walkthrough of every single thing that's in the kit and the add-ons. But I'm focusing on the stamps. So this is the stamp set on the left that comes with the kit itself. The add-on has this girl with the curly hair, which is really cute. And then we have the same girl from one stamp set in another size in the other stamp set. And she's got, instead of watermelon in one, she's got a surfboard in the other. And then there's an RV to color. You know me, I focus on coloring. So what I did was look at the ephemera and see how they match up for ideas on the coloring with the stamps themselves. So if you get the kit, these are fun for ideas on what you can possibly do with them. I love that she's got different hair and different ethnicities in them. And so you can see the the ones on the first set match the, the stamps themselves. This little girl somewhat matches. She's got a surfboard in two of them. And then the RV that's in the ephemera pack is really big, would be good for a scrapbooking page. And then there's little tiny pieces like that surfboard and then all of these other things. There's drinks, there's little flowers, little greenery, all different sorts of things that coordinate with everything. So you can use them as different kinds of embellishments. Next up, I want to talk a little bit about sketches. Operation Right Home, the charity that I used to run, the website died. Long story about that. The charity is no longer in existence, but I did put the sketches on my website. So sandyalnock.com slash Operation Right Home. I'll have a link to that in the description as well as over on my blog. Here's a flip through of the PDF. It has 259, I think, sketches in it. The early ones are simpler sketches just really simple designs. They don't list the layering that I like to use on my cards when I do use pattern paper, which I don't do very often. Flip through toward the middle and the sketches start getting more complex and there's more embellishments indicated and that sort of thing. And if you flip all the way to the end of the PDF, you start getting into sketches that actually list out the size for each of the layers. I always assumed that people could figure out the layers themselves, but card makers feedback always said, hey, we want the size of the layers. So at the later end of the PDF, there are ones that have more specific measurements for those. So I'm gonna show you the sketch that I'm gonna use for each one of these. And then the coloring, or at least partial coloring on most of them, and the finished card and the assembly of the card. 
Note that there were a few places along in here where my camera just decided not to record things. And then there are some that are repeat colorings because I'm going to give them all the same background. I'm just going to show you the really simple beach background one time and then I'll show you some coloring tips on the rest of it. Now this is the little girl with the curly hair. I've got her paper cut to the size that it's going to be on my sketch because I did adapt from the sketch because I wanted something more square rather than a tall rectangle. For her I'm using a bunch of different colors. I mean there's like six or eight different colors in her hair. I didn't write them all down because I just, I had gotten back from my trip I went on a recent trip to Florida and my mind was in, oh my gosh, I just, I have to get something done, but I can't think straight. And I just didn't write down any colors. So I do apologize for that. You know, travel brain does things to you and apparently it bit me. <laughs> I do know on this hair that I did, because it was so much fun to do, I used some dark purples in order to do some of the shading on her hair. So try out your dark purples. I think it was a V17, if I recall correctly. And I did go in at the end, I believe, and add a little E19. So I like to go for a really heavy contrast in things just to add a little drama to it. And that is where I headed, is to give her a lot of drama in the hair to go from that light orange into a really darker color down below. If you're interested in more skin tone combinations, if you, you like the stuff that Lizzie has done with, with lots of different skin and hair, there is a free human rainbow chart over at art-classes.com. I'll put a link to that in the description down below if you're interested in finding some Copic hair and skin combinations. I decided, since I had all this pattern paper at my disposal this time, because I don't normally keep any pattern paper in the house, that I would use a little bit for paper piecing on a few things. So I did the bow by just stamping it onto the pattern paper and cutting it out by hand and gluing it on. I do know, I believe, the colors for the background. This is the background I'm going to use for all the cards. And I used an E31 for the sand, and I believe that's an E45 for the water and I added a little bit more detail in the water just a little bit of darker color with an E97 and then a white pen with it so you'll see that in a little bit I don't remember what this darker brown was but you can use any kind of mid-tone type of brown and it was probably maybe I'm looking at it and thinking an E33 I'm usually fairly good at figuring these things out, but this is a little different paper than I normally use, so the colors look slightly different than they normally do. I used an E41 in the sky because I wanted the blue to be a little duller and match the pattern papers a little bit better. And I just drew the little clouds at the bottom and filled the rest of the sky in. And in different ones, I'll do different combinations of how, how high up the clouds go, etc. It's one of the fun things. You can decide where your clouds go based on where your image is stamped. And then I added just a little bit of detail in the clouds piled up there on the horizon. And I, I just kind of left the sky that way. You can use a lighter color with this. Just make sure that it matches the pattern papers you're going to be using if you're, if you're interested in trying to make everything coordinate. This is the E97, so I just added sort of some sketchy lines across the water and then on the very tops of it just added some doodles with white to create the foam just let them get thicker and thinner and it looks very much like waves you can also put some birds in the sky so i just used a i think that was like a that looks like a c6 c5 something like that and just made a few birds flying around to assemble the card you can see the sketch there I have a layer of pink, which is the card base. I added a layer of black and then the paper, which is the same one that I used for her little bow. And all I had to do was trim off that bottom edge where I had stamped her, her bow so that I didn't have that cut into the card. I wanted to use the washi tape for that long strip. So I glued a little piece of scrap white paper onto the black layer that I added, um, added that onto the sketch. That layer is not there. But then I wanted all these beautiful little banners. They're drawn as little boxes on the sketch, but I made them little banners. Tried to line them up so that the edges were, were even and then centered my, my little strip 
I hadn't centered the whole thing on the card itself, so then I just lifted it up since I had adhesive on the back and then was able to glue it down. And now I've got that base portion of my, my card design done. Then I put her onto a layer, and of course I had to adjust my measurements because she's a square image rather than a rectangle, as shown on the sketch. And I used some of the dimensional adhesive to create a little bit of dimension on the card. These are on the thick side. I generally tend to use the, the big roll, the big mama roll of the precious, as we used to call it. The precious is the scotch roll. And it's a little bit on the thinner side than these high pro higher profile dimensional adhesives provided in the kit. And then I decided instead of that little tab down there, that little flag or banner, that I would use just a little bit of the epoxy dots in a few colors as a little focal element down there at the bottom. And I added a sticker of the Hello Sunshine for the sentiment up in the sky. So that is card number one. Card number two, I adapted this sketch. And when you're using a sketch, you can adapt things. I didn't put the embellishment down there at the bottom and I used that whole area for it, the image rather than just that little square with the little embellishment below it. And my paper is cut out to the size that it's going to be for my card. You could also just cut that size later, but it helps to actually figure out where you want to place the image. I'm going to make her into a blonde gal and add a few elements that were inspired by the ephemera die cuts and the coloring that they did on those. But I'll get my hair all done. I'm going to give her sort of a somewhere in the middle between a strawberry blonde and a blonde kind of. I did mention that I was testing to see if this is Copic friendly paper and it is. I did get some nice blends going. You can tell the difference though between the color of the paper itself. The paper that came in the kit is of course what I'm coloring on. The paper behind it is Nina Solar White. So if you're used to Nina Solar White, that's the difference in color. So it's a little on the cooler side rather than warmer. I kind of generally like the warmer look, but the cooler works just fine. And on a card, nobody's going to notice regardless. So I decided this one with the cool glasses was one that I wanted to mimic. So I started with a lighter gray and just drew some sunglasses on her. And I started with a lighter gray in case I needed to adapt it. If I started in with the black color and screwed it up, then I wouldn't be able to remove that color, but I could fix it a little bit if I started with a lighter color. And then I just added some white highlights with a pen. I stamped the image onto a, a piece of patterned paper. One of them is a purple, one of them is a pink, and I did a, a two-piece coloring or a two-piece paper piecing, shall we say, of the surfboard. The rest of the sketch I decided to adapt even further by adding a strip across it rather than just having two pieces of paper and a layer on it. But as you could tell, I didn't have enough in that long strip left over. So I just had one piece sticking out on one side, one sticking out on the other side so that I could use up a scrap of that pink since I didn't have a full five and a half inch bit. And then I also wanted to use the sentiment. This is from the die with the outline and script font. So there is card number two. She's got the same scene as in the previous one, by the way. I just use different amounts of the darker blue to make the waves. For this next one, I picked a sketch where I could use a die cut image and place it in that long rectangle in the center. And you can decide whether or not you want to have that rectangle or just have the image there instead and make an adaptation like that to a sketch like this. I decided I wanted to give her curly hair instead of this long, beautiful straight hair. So I colored her first with, I think it was a number five-ish type of gray, and then went in with a dark gray on top and just made squiggly lines for the hair. I love the fact that you can adapt all different kinds of fun things when you do coloring. You can make it look like the person you're sending it to. You can make it look like you. You can make it look like anything you want. And as I said earlier, there is a human rainbow chart that will show you different skin tones. Eventually, I want to do something like that with hair. I just, you know, there's so many things on my list of stuff to do. I want to get around to that at some point. And yeah, 
keep your eye out. Maybe as my to-do list gets shorter, I'll get to that one since it hasn't been on, uh, on my urgent list as of yet. So she looks really cute with all of her cute curly hair. I went in with the mid-tone marker again, just so I wouldn't have so many tiny fussy details jumping out at you, soften up a little bit. Then time for the card assembly, gluing down each one of the panels. I was using, by the way, an ATG gun. I don't tend to show my ATG gun because it doesn't matter what kinds of adhesives you use for the most part in my book. I love my old ATG gun that I've had for eons and that is generally what I use. So I decided I was going to actually use that, that panel to put my girl on, that skinny panel in the center. And I slipped the banner underneath. I decided to make it a two-part banner, cutting off that outside point, and used a couple of little epoxy dots to add as the embellishments. I wanted to put a sentiment in here, and I had stamped out the sweet thanks from one of the sets, and realized it was sticking out further than I wanted, so I stuck it under there, and having the little thanks banner peeking out from under there looked awfully cute. So there we go, with my little girl on Pop Dots, sticking up on the card with all these fancy papers. For the next sketch, I picked one that had something a little bit off kilter. It has that panel of pattern paper at an angle, which I thought would be kind of fun to play with. The camera did not record my coloring. It could be that my little finger didn't press the button. I don't know. I'm going to blame it for the moment on the camera. How about that? Let's call it a technical difficulty. But uh, I decided to use those peel off stickers to put on the outside edges of each of my little panel of paper. And I changed the angle of the the tilted pattern paper panel. You can certainly do that. And I used a stamped sentiment instead of putting it onto a piece of paper and layering it on like in the sketch. But same background once again for this card. And now we're on to the RV and I was looking for a big image area. So I decided this one with a circle would be good and wanted to give you another idea for how you can use pattern paper and paper piecing along with Copic coloring. I already have my die cut of the circle and the stamped image added on my little pieces that I want to color, but I'm going to color over them with a gray marker. And that's going to make it feel like the whole thing is shaded in the same way. Because otherwise, if you added that pattern paper right on top, you wouldn't really get the sense of it being dimensional. So if you're somebody who likes to color with dimension, you can color right on top of pattern paper just fine. The little flags I cut out of the same pink paper that I did some of the rest of it and glued them on top. I'm adding the rest of the elements of my card now and to make that little little scallop border at the bottom I cut out a bunch of little circles and just stuck my horizontal layer right on top of that to hold them in place. You could also use a border type of die or some sort of border punch to do something like that but you could also do it just with little circles. And then I added all the other parts of my card on some dimensional adhesive and added the stamp sentiment in that panel across the bottom there. I did make some heavy black outlines around my flower and my leaf in order to match all the nice strong contrast I had on the rest of the card. So there's all my crazy cards made for today. If you're interested in more about the kit, etc., there's links in the doobly-doo as well as over on my blog. I know this was a long, crazy video. Thank you for sticking with me. Don't forget to go see Christy's videos. She does amazing stuff with love from Lizzie. And I will see you guys later in another video. Have a really, really great day. Bye-bye.